Hello everyone. In this clip, we will be covering the content of Unit 4, uh, which is about sampling distributions and estimations. Make sure you watch carefully as we explore the key concepts and the important topics for this lesson. Okay. Uh, there are three uh, sections in here. Uh, the first thing, it's about introduction going to give you a quick overview of the uh, sampling distribution and parameter estimation and then we are going to move on to sampling distribution and I will talk about only one uh, distribution which is the sample mean okay uh, for sample uh, standard deviation and proportion you can study on your own and in 4.3, it's about parameter estimations. Uh, there are two types of that, uh, which are point estimation and interval estimation. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what sampling distribution and estimation are. Uh, in unit 4 and 5, unit 4 is this one and unit 5 is the next chapter. In uh, these two units or chapters, we will be using or explore the concept of uh, so-called inference statistics. Okay, we talk about inference statistics, uh, which uh, includes the estimating and hypothesis testing. These two are very important in statistics. Okay, and in inferential statistics, we use uh, we talked about this before, right? Uh, we use the sample data to estimate the value of population. Remember, uh, we have descriptive uh, statistics where we can find the value, where we calculate the values of mean, median, and mode, and then we make an inference of the population. We want to look, uh, find the mean, find the variance, find proportion or whatever of the population. Uh, right here of the five population parameters okay and also we use the sample data to test the hypothesis we first estimate there are two types we have uh, estimator and we have hypothesis testing okay uh, to make inference uh, statistics okay there are two two branches two types okay estimation and hypothesis testing for inferential statistics okay uh, for hypothesis testing we use the sample data to test the hypothesis or test the claim and uh, the claim that we make about the population parameters okay there are two methods uh, for inferential statistics again right here uh, if we have a big population, say like 10,000 members in it, uh, in population here, and what we are looking for is, for example, we want to find the mean, we want to find standard deviation, uh, or other parameters of the population. Since uh, the population is so large, and to do the census or make a survey of every single one in the population, uh, it's not a practical way to do it because it is costly or it is like really uh, take time to do it. So what we do, we don't make a survey of everyone, but what we do, we take a sample. Again, this is a revision of what we talked about before in chapter 2. We take a sample, okay? Take a sample of this population, take sample out and find descriptive statistics which is find mean median mode or uh, quartile or whatever percentile uh, and other values in descriptive statistics we find all of the information of this sample because it is small that we can calculate the values or statistics so-called statistics uh, of this sample after we know this value, then our main goal is to find the parameters of the population, right? We will use these values, okay, and make an inference statistic, okay, and uh, make an inference uh, in order to estimate or find the 
uh, population parameters. We want to find the mean standard deviation, for example, of the whole population by using uh, the sample uh, statistics. Okay, the value here. Okay, based on this value, we make an inference statistics to find this mean and standard deviation, for example. Okay, and the subject that do this, okay, we call inference statistics. Okay, this is main goal. Okay, to, to get this, uh, there's a way to do it. There are two methods to do it. Estimation, as I said, estimation and uh, hypothesis testing. Okay. Again, give you a big picture of statistical inference. Okay, make an inference. There are two types of it. Uh, first, it's estimation, and the second one, uh, is hypothesis testing. For the parameter estimation, there are two methods to do. Okay, uh, the first method it's point estimation. We use point uh, to estimate. And the second one, we estimate by giving uh, by uh, uh, giving an interval, okay, uh, to to estimate uh, the population parameters, okay. And another method right here, it's hypothesis testing, and we will talk about this in chapter four, uh, chapter five, sorry. Again. This is uh, a flow chart, kind of uh, another picture of uh, statistical inference right here. Suppose we have population here, and our main goal is to find the average weight of CMU undergrads. We want to know uh, the average weight of everyone in uh, Chiang Mai University. And it is impractical to make a survey and uh, to get all the information of everyone in CMU. Okay, <clears throat> what we do is here we take a sample out. Okay, and we found that the average uh weight of CMU undergrad is about sixty two kilograms. Now we want to make an inference back to the population, and there are two ways to do it. Two methods. First, parameter estimation, as I said, we do estimation, parameter estimation, which uh, uh, there are two methods in here, point estimation and interval estimation. For point estimation, we may use uh, the sample statistics, okay, the value of the sample uh, to estimate uh, the parameter. So if we use this method, we can say that the average weight is okay, it's just 62, same as uh, our sample. But this is, uh, it has a lot of errors because you use just only sample value to estimate, okay? <clears throat> it depends on the sample, okay? It may have, may cause error for this point estimation. And for interval estimation, uh, it uses interval to estimate the range, okay, in which the population parameter lies in, okay. It just gives you like the interval so that okay, we are confident, like maybe ninety five percent confidence that uh the weight of the population will be in here, something like that. Give you just an interval, okay, so that uh. Uh, the the exact weight the weight of the population lies in here. Okay, give you a rough uh, interval here. For example, uh, the average weight is within uh, the intervals uh, from sixty to sixty four with ninety five percent confidence level. Okay, in this method, uh, we will have so called confidence level, the confidence level that uh, the weight. The population weight lies into lies in this interval. Okay, this is parameter estimation, and another method which is uh, different from parameter estimation. Another method, uh, is so called hypothesis testing right here. Okay, so again we take sample out and then we will test do hypothesis testing or make a claim. Okay, uh, we claim that, for example, we claim that 
uh, the average weight is smaller than 62 and we want to test if this one is true or not like that to decide if statement regarding parameter is true or false based on the sample data okay this is another way to test it because we have sample data at 62 kilogram the weight of 62 kilogram we want to check if the population uh, weight is 62 or smaller or bigger something like that here we can do hypothesis testing so there are two ways to do it Okay, parameter estimation which has like two methods and then also hypothesis testing this is in unit 5 and this one is unit 4 okay or chapter 4 all right <coughs> now we go move on to the first uh, method which is parameter estimation but before we go over this there is another topic for you uh, to understand before we do parameter estimation in 4.2 it's about sampling distribution because uh, we need to take sample out right and uh, the sample is taken randomly so uh, the statistic sample statistics which are mean sd proportion or whatever the measurement of the sample uh, that it's calculated from the sample uh, are considered a random variable as well okay sample because sam again sample is taken randomly so every statistic statistic mean the measurement of the sample for example mean is the proportion variance okay every statistic uh, that we get from the sample uh, can be considered as a random variable as well so mean is the like this uh, can be considered as random variable and the probability distribution of these statistics uh, we, we call uh, is referred to as its sampling distribution okay Again, uh, the probability distribution, the distribution of probability of statistic, we call that sampling distribution, okay? Again, sampling distribution is probability distribution of statistics, all right? In this section, we will talk about sampling distribution, okay? Which is probability distribution, all right? We, we we will find it in a similar way as we did in chapter 3 okay. and sampling distribution shows the distribution when we talk uh, when we take a possible sample of the same size okay it shows a distribution of course uh, when we take sample of the same size say suppose a uh, population has like 10,000 and then we take sample of 300 for example or 100 Sample of 100, sample 1, sample 2 take another 100, sample 3 take another 100, something like that is sample of the, of the same size, okay, from the same population. And the three common sampling distribution, there are three common sampling distribution, which are uh, sampling distribution of mean, variance and proportion variance and sd they are similar okay so mean variance and proportion and i will talk about the mean only uh, because the other uh, sampling distribution uh, you can do it in the same way okay let's see what it is what they are this is a uh, sampling distribution of mean uh, how to do it sampling procedure okay you take sample out sampling distribution means you take many many sample out of the same size so you randomly uh, chosen n values out of the population so take a sample of n objects n things okay and then find the mean for each sample 
for example you take sample one out that has n uh, objects in here okay sample one of n size n and you have a uh, phytamin and it is x1 bar take sample size sample two okay another sample of the same size n okay phytamin which is x bar two and take another sample sample three of the same size n and find the mean again and name it x bar 3 and keep going keep continue this process and you will have a lot of means here depends on how many samples you take and these samples are of the same size which is n n and n and if you plot the distribution of the sample mean if you plot of the of plot means you do probability distribution you find probability uh, of each value okay <coughs> each sample mean okay and if you plot the probability it will look like a normal distribution bell shape for the variance do the same thing take sample one of size n and find the standard deviation sample two find standard deviation sample three standard deviation and keep uh, keep doing this and if you plot uh, the distribution okay sampling distribution and it will be skewed okay skewed to the right okay right here and for proportion proportion is similar to the mean if you do the same thing here proportion we use p p hat okay uh, the distribution looks like a normal distribution with bell shape like this okay and in this unit uh, we will uh, explore or we will talk about the inference of a mean only Okay, one can study further if you are interested in the inference of variance or proportion in a similar concept. So we will be doing the, uh, I will show you just the inference of the mean. Okay. Alright. And if you are interested in variance and proportion, we can do it in similar way. So. I will talk about only sampling distribution of the sample mean, okay, just only for the mean, and I will walk you through uh, to see the picture of how we do sampling distribution of the mean, okay. Uh, remember, our main goal is to estimate the population mean, okay. Our main goal is to estimate the population mean, all right. Uh, in order to do this, uh, in order to estimate the population mean, then we need to take out the sample, right? We need to take our sample out of the population. So, in practice, we usually rely on only a single sample. Let's say, oh, we, we take just only one sample and then we just estimate that and uh, estimate uh, my, I mean, uh, we take just only sa one sample and then uh, use that to do parameter estimation or hypothesis testing uh, to find the population mean. But instead of doing so, uh, because we, well, we can do it, but uh, uh, it might cause error, right? Uh, instead of doing so, we can repeat Tedly take samples of the same size n instead of doing single sample uh, we can do many many sample like this see we do sampling distribution instead of doing one sample and make an inference of the population parameters then we can do we can take many samples of the same size okay repeatedly okay repeatedly taken uh, samples of the same size then calculate the sample mean for each sample okay we calculate the mean take sam the first sample then calculate mean as x1 take the second sample calculate mean as x2 and so on 
and let x bar a big x be random variable it is a sample mean so that it is random variable okay let's x bar then it turns out that this x bar follows normal distribution with mean mu x bar and uh, standard deviation sigma x bar okay what is it uh this is mu x is uh, so called it is the mean of sample mean and sigma x is the sd standard deviation of sample means what is it uh suppose you have sample one and the mean is x1 bar sample two the mean is x2 bar and we have standard deviation is one like that a variance right something like that and keep doing until x bar uh big n it depends on how many samples you take okay suppose we have this and if you find mean mean of x1 bar up to xn bar and we will call this the mean of the sample mean which is mu of x bar like that okay and also uh, for the standard deviation this is variance right and if you find standard deviation of these values then uh, you will have a standard deviation of the sample mean <coughs> okay again this is picture as i write written down here actually we have the next page if you take out pop uh, consider this population uh, it has mean mu which we don't know the value and standard deviation which is sigma not sigma square sigma sigma square is the var variance and take our sample one take our sample two sample k sample one has mean of x1 bar and standard deviation is one sample two has mean of x2 bar standard deviation of s2 sample k keep doing it until the last one sample k has the mean of x bar k and standard deviation of sk and if we consider this distribution of the mean okay distribution of the sample mean we plot it we find the probability of that then uh, it turned out to be uh, like this sample means tends to have normal distribution and with the mean okay with the mean of this mean of the mean again okay it's mean of the mean okay mean of the sample mean it's mean of the sample mean and we name it mu x and this mu x you can uh, actually it is actually the same value as the population mean okay so if you find mean of the sample one up to sample k and you find mean of the all this mean mean of the mean okay and uh, we name it mu x and this mu x is the same as mu population mean and standard deviation is something different standard deviation sigma of the mean standard deviation of the mean uh, is uh, population standard deviation over square root n okay if you get sigma x bar then you can figure out sigma okay because uh, we have formula for it if you want to find sigma then you just multiply uh, sigma x bar by square root n 
for example to see a better picture okay suppose uh, a rowing a rowing team consists of four rowers we have four rowers and the weight of these four rowers are 152 156 160 and 164 pounds okay and five of the possible random sample with replacement it mean means you take out then you can replace it back okay uh, we take sample size okay random sample of size 2 okay we have 152 156 160 164 take out sample of 2 okay we take out the sample of 2 population has 4 data Now you have only four people for data in the population. This is easy. Uh, and we consider the sample size, sample of size two. Okay, so uh, sample, we take samples of size two, which mean uh, two slots here. And each slot has four choice, four choice. So of all these, we have 16 choices possible right there are 16 ways to make this sample of a different sample okay agree with me for example we have uh, might be 150 152 and uh, it is with replacement so we put back 152 so the next thing will be 152 again we pair 152, 156, something like that, and keep going. So there are 16 choices of this, okay, making this sample in here, okay. So uh, the following table shows a possible sample with replacement of size 2. So there are 16 choices, right, because we have 4 data. So 152, 152, 152, 156. This is sample number one, sample one, sample two, and so on. And it will be sample number 16, okay? And what, what we do is we take our sample. We have the weight of 152, 152, then find the mean of these two number, okay? Which is 152, and these two value, the mean is 154. Uh, 156, 160, the mean is 158, and keep doing it until the last one, 164 and 164, so the mean is just 164. So, next, collect all these mean values, okay? We call this mean of the samples. Sample means. Sample. Okay, we have sample means okay so the value of the samples mean we have 152 right 154 156 and 158 okay 160 162 164 and we find the probability distribution so we count so there are 16 values in here and 152 appears only 1, right? So the probability is 1 over 16. 154 appears twice right here. So it's 2 over 16 and keep doing it until 164 appears only 1. Uh, so probability is 1 over 16. And this is probability distribution. If we plot it here, we plot uh sample mean right sample mean 152 a probability is 1 over 16 and 158 the probability is 4 over 16 something like that we do the histogram and it look like see normal distribution bell shape okay like this 
And to find the mu x, you can find it here too. It's summation of x p x. Okay. And it is one fifty eight. Okay. And uh, sigma standard deviation is a way to find it, and it is square root ten. All right. Since this population has only four data, we can calculate by hand of the mean of the population. The mean and standard deviation of the population can calculate by hand, right? You add them all divided by four, you get mu equals to 158. Okay. And this is mu x. And sigma x, remember how to find it? Sigma x. Uh, we find sigma square x, which is variance of variance of x. Remember that. So it's e of x squared minus e of x the whole thing squared, like that. Okay. Uh, you can find sigma x from chapter three, <coughs> and. We if we compare with the population, this is mean. Uh, this is mean of the sample, sample mean. Okay, and for the population mean, we also can find it because there are only four data. And find mu is 158. This mu comes from uh, 1. 52 plus 156 plus 160 plus 164 okay and divided by 4 you get 158 to find sigma then you need to set up the table and find it you get square root 20 and we compare this two okay if you compare uh, you can see that mu of the population and mu of the uh, sample mean, okay, sample the mean of the sample mean, they are all the same. So uh, if you do sampling distribution and you, you find mean of sampling distribution right here, mean of the sample mean, then uh, more likely that you will, uh, the mean will be the same as the mean of the population, okay? Since we don't know the population in real life, I mean, we don't know the mean of the population in real life, the way you can do it, you can take our sample, many, many, many sample, and find the mean, okay? Find the mean like this, and then also find sample mean, and then find mean of the sample mean. And we can use this to represent the value of the population, okay? This is an, a way to find it, okay? do sampling distribution and to find sigma uh, in, we can do it in similar way and we can com compare sigma here uh, the population standard deviation is square root 20 and the standard deviation of the sample mean is square root 10 so the formula is sigma over square root n like this so it roots 20 over square root 2 which is gonna be like this, square root 10, okay? So actually, for sigma is something different, okay? For sigma x, standard deviation is not the same as standard deviation of the population, but it is standard deviation of the population over square root n. So I make a conclusion here. Suppose the random sample of the size n are drawn from a population. Okay, you have population. You take sample. Some sample of size n would mean <coughs> Uh, mu and standard deviation sigma 
and the mean and standard deviation of the sample mean uh, is mu x and sigma x okay we have sample of size n many many samples of size n then you do the mean of the sample means and sd of the sample means and you get mu x bar and sigma x bar then we can use this mu x bar as the mu or the mean of the population and for the population standard deviation you need to follow this formula because the standard deviation of the sample mean is uh, population standard deviation over square root n n is the sample size okay. and uh, from here there is a theorem to support this we call central limit theorem if you take our sample like really large sample greater than 30 then the sampling distribution of x bar can be approximated by normal distribution and this theorem is important we can use it for hypothesis testing and parameter estimation later and the mean uh, mu will be the same as the uh, mean of the sample mean but standard deviation will be different it will be sigma over square root n Okay. For example, if you you take our sample of n equals five, it will be like sharpie, not not bell shape. Okay, like that. But if you take our sample of like thirty, uh, it looks smooth. Okay, like bell shape. Like that. All right. Uh. Again, uh, this is the same. Uh, in next clip, okay, I will stop here for this clip. In next clip, I will talk about parameter estimation. We will start doing this method first, okay, in the red box. And in next unit, we will can do hypothesis testing. In this unit, we will do this too, okay, and we continue on the next clip.